Hey guys, I'm Jane Dupree, and today I'm going to be showing you some defensive safety shots that you must know and must be able to use uh, in a match. And kind of defense is, leads to great offense. And what I mean by that is if you play a great defensive shot, if your opponent is somewhere like, like that or something and he misses the ball, then you get ball in hand. So that's what I mean by defense leads to great offense. That's uh, something a lot of uh, sports say football, basketball, can't really play good defense, and baseball, I guess, defense would be like pitching or something. Uh, but right here, we have a shot on the one. What we could do is we could try to bank the one in the side. Uh, but that is kind of, we don't, we don't want to shoot that. That's a little low percentage compared to the safety. And I'd rather have a ball in hand shot than shoot that bank. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a little containing safety. And we're going to hit with a little bit of top. Thin off the one. Make sure we catch that rail. Come back and leave the cue ball behind the five. Now you see our opponent only has a kick shot. And the thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to leave our opponent the same shot that we had. Because then this could just go on forever. You can play with a little draw and try to bring it behind. But if your opponent screws up on a safety like that, you still have a run out. So that is what we want to work on. Playing containing safety shots that either give us a shot or a ball in hand. We don't want to leave our opponent with an easy safety. So this one comes up in a lot of different ways. Just depends on how thin you hit this ball and the speed that you hit it at. See, right here would be a bad shot. And also, this would be a bad shot too. See, that's too hard. So you want to find that good little middle ground, and that's going to be this speed right here. Just like that. A little slow, but we're still there is still no sh clear shot at the one. We're going to have to kick at it. And a good thing about a kick is it can leave an easy shot like this. Or just leave a shot. So the goal is to leave a shot for yourself or get ball in hand. So this one we're gonna, going to be trying another uh, containing safety shot. Now this one we could bank this one ball up and down the table and come around two rails and get shape on the five. Uh, that would be the offensive shot. If you like that, go ahead and shoot it. It's not too difficult of a bank, especially if you're playing on like a valley. If I'm playing on a valley, I bank this. If I'm in a tight match on a valley, uh, it's kind of 50-50 for me, but I prefer to go defensive. So this shot right here, we're going to just try to feather that ball, leave the cue ball on the rail behind the five. Now, the ball on the rail part is, it doesn't sound too extra, uh, but it is very, very important because it makes it harder. Your opponent cannot use draw. They're limited to using only one half of the cue ball, uh, which makes it a lot difficult. Now, we can see the right edge of this, uh, so our opponent uh, maybe can thin off of it and come two rails behind the five again, but this pocket is going to scratch. Uh, so it's left in a very, very difficult situation. Now, uh, even when this ball is out of the picture. One shot that you're gonna have to practice is coming in here, thinning off this, leaving this frozen or close to the rail, and leaving your cue ball frozen or close to the rail. Leaving only a bank. Uh, so this shot is good when there's no blocker ball, but you don't wanna bank this full table. So if you're playing on like a 10 foot or a nine foot diamond, uh, this shot is one that you're going to have to learn. So coming in, cutting this ball into the rail. If you cut it just at the right angle, they're both going to go out at the same angle and leave in the same part of the rail. Uh, so make sure you learn both of those shots to get your defensive game down. So here's another shot that I like to shoot when there's no blocker ball for me to get behind. Uh, now if I'm playing on a valley, I'm just going to bank that one in. It's an easy bank, uh, but if I'm in a tight match or I've not been banking good, something I'm going to do is this little containing shot right here. And 
first you need to make sure that this ball is not frozen to the rail. Frozen means not touching the rail directly. If it's a little bit off of it, this is the perfect shot. You may leave your opponent an easy safety, but you don't want to leave them an easy makeable shot. And the shot is just to do that. Slightly roll it up on the one ball. Make sure the one ball hits the rail. You want to hit it uh, hard enough to where it hits the rail, uh, but slow enough to where your cue ball gets close to it. And the goal is to get this ball frozen to the rail and this cue ball frozen to this ball. It's difficult to do, uh, but at least get one or the other. Because that makes it very difficult. Because this rail doesn't count. If it's frozen to that rail, that rail doesn't initially count, so they can't just do that. They can do that if their cue ball hits the rail, but if this ball just stays there and they thin off of it and the cue ball does not hit a rail, it is a foul shot and you get ball in hand. Uh, so it is a very, very good shot to learn and know. Although there is an easy safety out of it, there's blockers on the other end just to roll down there behind the blockers. Uh, but they could scratch just like that. Uh, but this shot is better than leaving an open shot. It's just, the, it's just the thing about it. I played this shot a lot. Uh, and let's move on to the next little containing shot. So this shot right here. Let's say my opponent played a safety. Nine balls here. My opponent played a safety that's like this. Now I can't see the one. A lot of people would just take this, swing at the one, miss it, their opponent gets ball in hand, one seven nine combo. And that's also an important thing to think about when you're playing safeties. Try to leave the nine close to an easily comboed ball or leave it close to a pocket or leave your one ball close to the nine uh, so if they mess up, you get ball in hand and have an easy nine ball combo. But this shot right here, what I would do, I wouldn't even pay attention to the one. I'd say, look, good safety. Now let's see if you can play offense and get out. So what I'd do is I'd pocket the nine. That means the nine goes back to the spot and it is no longer accessible from that combo. Now, don't get me wrong, they could still be a good player and shoot that combo, draw back for shave, and then just end up running out. But that makes it a hard earned win. And you don't wanna give up easy games. That would be giving up an easy game, just swinging at that one ball, trying to get it to go down. Now, if you're a good player, and you know you're good at kicks, maybe you can come in two rails, try to hit the one, and make the one seven nine combo. But you see how much more difficult that is? If you miss this by a hair, you're still going to leave your opponent that shot. You don't want to do that. So just combo, just make that nine. Just take the intentional foul and make the nine. And the next shot I'm going to show you is also an intentional foul shot. So let's say there is no three foul rule in this tournament. Your one ball is like that and your opponent scratched on their last shot or you have ball in hand for some reason. Or even if there is a three foul rule. Uh, it, you just have to make sure your opponent's on their first foul though. Uh, or has fouls. So I would take the ball in hand. I wouldn't play safe off of that one. I'd take this nine, roll it up there. So no, there's no chance in hitting that one. The only chance they would have, they're on their first or second foul. If they're on their uh, second foul and you tell them you're on two, there's no way they can hit this ball legally. I mean, they could jump over that and edge it, but that is the most difficult shot in the world, although it's been done. There is a video of it. But just take this nine or any ball and just roll it up to a position where the one ball is not hittable. Now, that's a bad shot. Although, I think it's a bad shot. I'm, I'm not sure. It was close. I think that was a bad shot, though. Uh, but this shot right here can leave, if you leave it like that, you want to leave so that you can't come off the rail on either sides and you can't come through the middle. That's the perfect spot to leave it. Leave it. The first shot that I showed you was the perfect spot to leave it. So if they're on one foul, and even if this happens to you, this is a little tip, just try to break it out and leave this ball way up there. 
We're trying to leave the blocker ball that they used way up there. So, trying to leave it impossible for them to play that shot again. Uh, or just, if you have to, whack it out of there. Take the intentional foul, whack it out of there. Uh, sometimes that's the best thing you can do. Just hope for the best. Uh, hope for a few balls tied up. But if you're on your first or second foul and that comes up, you're screwed. There really is no other way to put it. Uh, so either whack it out of there, jump over it, it's going to be a tough situation. But it's a tough situation you can put your opponent into. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on this video. Uh, if you want to be notified when I post a new video, you can click the subscribe button, then the bell icon right next to it. That will just send you an email and a notification saying that I've uploaded a new video. Thank you guys so much for 54,000 subscribers, almost at 55,000. Uh, so thank you for that. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.